Chag Sameach. Happy Passover, everyone. It's really kind of strange to be joining you in this way, but at the same time, it's very special as well. We want to welcome you to our Passover table and wish you Chag Sameach. Happy Passover. It says in the Passover Haggadah, the, the book that we read at the Seder, the Passover meal, that in every generation, a person has to see themselves as though they specifically, they personally came out of Egypt. And I think that this Passover evening and this season, it's not very difficult to imagine how that could be so. And with that having been said, we thought about all the wonderful, creative people in our congregation that have so many different versions of their understanding of Passover and all of the wonderful things that they have to share. And we wanted to share that with you. So since we are told that this night is different from all other nights, we decided to really make sure that it was different in the best of ways. We have invited different members of the congregation to film just one of the steps of the Seder. So tonight you will be able to see on video an entire Passover Seder without the Haggadah, without a book that you need to follow, but you'll still be able to do all of the steps along with the TI families who, who you see tonight, or you can just watch it just for the entertainment of being able to see how different families celebrate this holiday. Whatever it is, we hope that you feel that this Passover, we are all in it together. We are doing this as one community, even though we are a family of families, one family table, one Seder table at a time. So Chag Sameach, everyone. We hope that this is, if not a, a Passover like anything you've ever experienced before, at least that is one that is filled with joy and with hope. We know that we are all in this together. Chag Sameach, everyone. Hi, we're the Abelin family. I'm Tucker. This is my brother Sam, my mom Jenny, and my dad Zach. Um, we are doing the Kiddush. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. Baruch Elohim We thank you, God, for giving us the gift of festivals for joy and holidays, for happiness among them this day of Passover, a festival of our liberation, a day of sacred assembly recalling the exodus from Egypt. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has kept us in life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this season. Baruch Hi, welcome to your next section of TI's Virtual Seder. I'm David Mills. This is Anita Mills. Hi. And what we're doing today is we're going to show you the ritual of washing our hands. Okay? Um, we hear a lot about it these days, and we're in some troubled times, but uh, it's probably something that can't be understated and not said enough. So. Uh, without further ado, Anita is going to show us how to wash our hands. So, lots of foam. Together, the backs of your hands. Don't forget the little thumbs. Wash good. Kind up your arms a little bit. I'm going to pretend I have a faucet. I'm going to rinse off really good. I'm going to turn it off with my elbow. And I'm going to dry my hands good. It's like she's already done that 25 times today, and we have, and we'll probably do it 25 more times. Um, be safe, everybody be safe. It's, it's a hard time going on out there right now. Uh, we need to take care of each other, even though we can't be near each other. And enjoy the rest of the Seder. We love you all. Stay safe. Hey, I'm Erin May. Hey, I'm Zoe May. And our part of the Seder is Yachatz. So this part of the Seder, we have three matzah that we have in this matzah cover. Mm -hmm. We're going to mm -hmm. take them out and we're going to take the middle of the three and we're going to break it in half just like this. So there's two different sizes. We're going to use the bigger one and then we're going to take the other matzah and put this back in our cover. And we're going to take this bigger piece, which is called the afikoman, and we're going to place it in a special wrapping. 
And the reason that we take the bigger piece is because we're gonna bring this piece back later for dessert. Afikoman literally means dessert. Um, and so traditionally, families will take the afikoman and they'll hide it somewhere in the house and the kids get to find it for a treat or some money or something else. So we're actually gonna give this afikoman to Stephanie Ray, who later in this video uh, will find the afikoman with her kiddos. Zoe, will you bring this over to Stephanie Ray's house? Hi everyone, we're Patty and Jeff Kaplan and we're sharing the four questions for the telling of the Passover story, Magid. Jeff made our version for our children before they could read. Slaves to Pharaoh and Egypt, and God brought us out with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. And if God had not brought our ancestors out of Egypt, we and our children and our children's children would still be subjugated to Pharaoh in Egypt. Even if we were all old and wise and learned in Torah, we would still be commanded to tell the story of the Exodus from Egypt. And the more we talk about the Exodus from Egypt, the more praiseworthy we are. The Torah describes four children who ask questions about the Exodus. Tradition teaches that these verses refer to four different types of children. The wise child asks, What are the laws that God has commanded us? The parent should answer by instructing the child in the laws of Passover, starting from the beginning and ending with the laws of the Afi Komen. The wicked child asks, What does this Passover service mean to you? The parent should answer, It is because of what God did for me when I came out of Egypt, specifically me and not you. If you had been there with your attitude, you wouldn't have been redeemed. The simple child asks, What is the Seder service? The parent should answer, With a mighty hand, God brought us out of Egypt. Therefore, we commemorate that event tonight through this Seder. And then there is the child who doesn't know how to ask. The parent should begin it, a discussion with the child based on the verse. And you shall tell your child on that day. We commemorate Passover tonight because of what God did for us when we went out of Egypt. This is the Levine family. We come to the point of the service to sing, Let My People Go. And I'm Greg Levine. And this is Annie Levine, Owen Levine, Connor Levine, and Allie Levine. Okay, are we ready? One, two, three. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. So pressed so hard they could not stand. Let my people go, go down Moses, way down Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. The Lord told Moses what to do, let my people go. To lead the children of Israel through, let my people go, go down Moses. 
Jesus, way down to Egypt's land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Now, Elijah, I know you're practicing social distancing, but next time you got to participate more. Dom, blood. Sifar dead. Frogs. Kinim. Lice. Arov. Wild beasts. Dever. Pestilence. Shechin. Boils. Barad. Hail. Arbe. Locusts. Choshech. Darkness. Makat Bichorot. Slaying of the firstborn. Ilu hoti hoti anu hoti anu mimi trim hoti anu mimi trim die nu die die nu die die nu die die nu die nu die nu die die nu die die nu die die nu die nu die nu This is the blessing over the second cup of wine Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Puri Agafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Now I am going to explain to you the symbols on our Seder plate. This is our Seder plate. This is very, very old. Okay, the first symbol we have is the Mar. It is the bitter herb or horseradish. It represents the bitterness of slavery. The second symbol is the herosis, which is a mixture of apples, nuts, and wine. It represents the brick and mortar we made in ancient times and the new structures we are beginning to build in our lives today. The next symbol we have is the lamb shake. And that represents the sacrifices that the Jewish people made to survive. Before the 10th plague, our people slaughtered lambs and marked our doors with blood. Because of this marking, the angel of death passed over our homes and our firstborn was spared. The next symbol is the egg, which symbolizes creative power, Jewish people's rebirth. The next symbol is the parsley, which represents a new growth for spring, for we are earthy, rooted beings connected to the earth and nourished by this connection. The next symbol is the salt water, which is a symbol of our tears, both then and now. And then we have the matzah, which is a symbol of unleavened hearts. And may the Seder enable our spirits to rise. Amen. Hello, my name is Julia Smotkin, and I'm going to be doing the Motsi, which is the blessing over the matzah and the meal. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who brings bread from the earth. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lehemin haaretz. Hello, we're the Stern family, and we're doing the blessing over the matzah. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with thy commandments and commanded matzah. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kishanu B'Mitzvotah, B'Tivanu Al Ahilat Matzah. Hi, this is Jill and Adam with your next step of the Passover Seder. The next step consists of making and eating the Hallel sandwich. The Hallel sandwich consists of three things. It consists of matzah, 
I would recommend splitting it into two pieces so it's ready to go for your sandwich. The bitter herb or the maror, which can come from either a horseradish root or from a jar. And the haroset. The haroset can be made in a variety of ways. You can use sliced apples, cinnamon or other spices, nuts and raisins, and wine or grape juice. The haroset symbolizes the mortar used by the Jewish people to make bricks while enslaved in Egypt. At this time, each person makes a halal sandwich using two pieces of matzah with the maror and the haroset. This is done in commemoration of an enactment made by the great sage Hillel, who lived in the time of the second temple. Enjoy your Hillel sandwich. Happy Passover. Hi, now it's time for the shulchan or rack or the festive meal, which is this. There are a few items that are traditional to the festive meal. And number one and most important is the egg. So the eggs are very representative. Without the eggs, we would not be able to eat a whole lot of food this week because without being able to use leavening agents, this is what helps us make our food edible. I probably go through six dozen eggs in the week, sometimes more. Um, so for the meal, it's customary that we start with a hard boiled egg to remember that and dip it in salt water. And that is representative of the tears of the ancient Israelites and the destruction of the temple. The egg itself is representative of mourning, rebirth, and continuity of life, all of which we experienced as we, um, as we made our exodus away from Pharaoh. Second on the meal is the gefilte fish. This is either an item you love or you hate. There's really no in-between. I happen to love it, but I only eat it at Passover and I don't know why. So I have been asked by non-Jewish people what a gefilte fish looks like, and there is no such fish. Gefilte fish is made from several fish um, mashed together. They're all bone deboned, boneless, and um, gefilte in Yiddish means stuffed. So they're all stuffed together and they're formed into a loaf or into balls, and they're I think they're delicious. Some are bland, which is why people put horseradish on them. And it all depends on where you come from in Europe as to whether they're sweet or savory or bland. So that's your gefilte fish. Sometimes it's made with salmon, which of course would turn it pink. And that's a very good, good gefilte fish as well. So another traditional food is matzo ball soup. So as you know, chicken soup is the Jewish penicillin. So it's something that Jews eat often and usually on Sabbath and holidays. So we eat it again on Passover, but because we're eating lots of food with matzah, we make matzah balls. So there's two ways you can make matzah balls. Some people make them very thick and heavy and dense and they'll sink to the bottom of your bowl. And other people make them light and fluffy. So I make mine light and fluffy and I make them fairly big and, um, they're really delicious and they add substance to the soup. So you can chop them up and let the, the broth sink into them and they're just very, very tasty. So that's one of your matzah, your matzah products. But don't fill up on all of those and it's very easy to do, but there's lots more food to come. So I usually make a traditional dinner of baked chicken of some sort, and this one has a mushroom sauce on it. Then I always make something that contains matzah again. So we, you can make matzah brai. I make matzah latkes sometimes. Latkes are not just for Hanukkah. You can make them in other, other forms. Um, but I think this year I'm going to be making a matzah kugel, and a kugel is just like with a pudding, another Yiddish word for you. It's a pudding. So you can make a luxion kugel during the, the year, and that's a noodle pudding, or you can make a matzah kugel. And I always make mine sweet. Some people make them savory with onions and spices and whatnot. I usually make mine like this, which has um, raisins in it. And then during Passover, you're not supposed to eat legumes, so I don't make green beans, but I do make my favorite vegetable, which is steamed broccoli. 
have to have have to have your fiber in there. And then for dessert, I always have an abundance of desserts. I usually have an entire table filled with desserts. I like to make desserts. So one that's a tradition that I started with my kids when they were little are meringue cookies. But we always called them night night cookies. And by that, we called them that because they would be the last thing I would make the night before Seder. The kids would help me make them. And while we were making them, the oven was preheating. We'd put them in the oven, we'd turn off the oven, and we'd say night night cookies, and we'd all go to bed and in the morning they'd be all done. So that's kind of a, a uh, fond memory that I make them for that reason. So these have chocolate chips in them and I usually put chocolate chips in mine as well. This is a um, flourless chocolate cake. So there's no matzo meal or nothing matzo in it. And you can garnish it with whatever fruit you want or whipped cream if you'd like. But this is delicious. It tastes like fudge and it's extremely rich and a cake this size will probably serve 20 people. Then we have our traditional macarons. You can buy them prepackaged um, or you can make them and they are so easy to make. So you can make them, you can dip them in chocolate, you can put chocolate chips in them, you can put cocoa in them and make them pure chocolate. Um, if you like coconut, macarons are good. Then there are farfel chocolate chip cookies. So you can take matzo farfel and make chocolate chip cookies and they're kind of like oatmeal chocolate chip cookies but the farfel replaces the oatmeal. Chocolate covered matzo. I always make sure I have that at my Seder because that's a favorite and that goes really quick. You can buy these prepackaged as well, but the homemade are so much better. And then last but not least, a favorite of my family is uh, Passover brownies that are very good. And my family sometimes thinks they're better than regular brownies. So, um, it's a, it's a large meal, it's a fun meal, and um, I hope you guys have a Seder that is meaningful and delicious, and happy Passover to everyone, and stay well, and stay healthy, but stay avon. Okay, so we just finished dinner. Diane makes the best chicken. Yeah, and so now we're waiting on the maze to bring us the uh, Afikoman. Oh, someone's at the door now. Hey, Zoe, thank you. Okay, we got the Afikoman. Temple Israel family. My name is Debbie Schultz, also known as Mora Debbie to the third graders and fourth graders in our religious school. I have the part of the Seder that is the blessing after the meal. So we just finished eating and then we're going to thank God for all of the food that was just provided to us. And we end that prayer with a prayer for peace, O say shalom. And while I would love to sing that for you by myself, I really love singing with my friends. So hold on, let me see if they can sing in their homes too. And now it's time for the third cup of wine or grape juice. We fill the cup and say the bracha together, 
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pori Hagafen. L'chaim. And now that we've had our three cups of wine, we pour an additional glass for Elijah the prophet. Tradition teaches us that Elijah comes to our homes to announce the coming of the messianic era, a time of peace and tranquility for the world. Let's open the door and see if Elijah's coming this year. Hey, Lila, is Elijah here? We'll have to wait and see. Happy Pesach, friends. Take us out of Egypt. Take us out of this land. If you don't do what Moses asked, God will appear with a big outstretched hand. It's pray, pray, pray for the Hebrews. We're tired of being your slaves. Cause it's one, two, ten plagues, you're out and it's us. God saves. We are the Goldbergs and we're here with our three of our granddaughters, the Gross Girls, and it is our distinct pleasure to be able to do the ending part of the Seder. And this is called Nertza, or the conclusion. And what we are going to say, I have to say first in Hebrew, Lashana Haba'ah for Yerushalayim. And then everybody together, next year in Jerusalem, 